Hello guys and girls, Voices from the Dark here, and welcome to the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, the Champion of Cyrodiil Challenge. What on Nern is the Champion of Cyrodiil Challenge? Well, it's a challenge that I come up with myself, where I intend to play through the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion and get 100% game completion, clear every quest, every cave, master all skills, I'll get into the more detailed list of rules and criteria later on, and all of it will be done on the hardest difficulty without allowing fast travel. Basically, I'm admitting that I'm a masochist. This project is going to be tremendous, it's going to be difficult, it's going to be insane, and it might take years to complete, but you know, at least we'll have something to fill the gap before The Elder Scrolls 6, am I right? So this cha Champion of Cyrodiil Challenge will feature the following. The main quest, Fighter Skill, Major Skill, Thieves Skill, Dark Brotherhood of the Arena, Side Quest, Data Quest, Master Training Quest, Hidden Quest, Iliad Ruins, Caves, Camps, Towns, Static Trines, Forts, Inns, Mines, Landmarks, Settlements, Oblivion Gates, Way Trines, Doomstones, Rune Souls, Alien Wells, Houses, Skill Books, and more. So if you are interested in going through Oblivion and doing everything, finding everything, talking to everybody, then you are welcome <laughs> to join me on this massive, massive adventure. Now. I do have a lot more to say, but I will not bore you with this main menu, we should try to actually get into the game a little bit, so enjoy the opening cinematic and enjoy Patrick Stewart's wonderful voice. I was born 87 years ago. For 65 years I've ruled as Tamriel's Emperor. But for all these years, I've never been the ruler of my own dreams. I have seen the gates of oblivion, beyond which no waking eye may see. Behold, in darkness a doom sweeps the land. This is the 27th of last seed, the year of Akatosh 433. These are the closing days of the third era and the final hours of my life. Here comes the goosebumps. Now that is a nostalgia bomb. That is such a big kick right in the nostalgia. Welcome back to the world of the Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. Well then guys and girls, I've done two series on Oblivion before, once in like 2012 with a succubus, a custom race, she was named Sundra A, and then I streamed Grothbog 2015-2016, uh, but this time around we'll be making a new character, we will do everything the game has to offer. And I remember as a kid when I got to this part of the cinematic, I got kind of creeped out. The music changes, it zooms in, it gets dark, and then... Oh, oblivion graphics! Oh, oh. Okay, Whew. I'm good, I'm good. I decided to not use any sort of texture packs for the faces. I want to keep the faces as is, and it is a truly horrifying thing to behold. I mean, the credits kind of look good, I mean, come on, have you seen them? But it's like, mmm. Mmm, wonderful. I do have some mods that I will go over, but nothing that really changes the gameplay or the faces, because I feel like having the faces remain the way they were meant is a big part of the, just the, the aesthetic of the game and the feel of the game, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Oh boy, we're not gonna be a female orc though. So, before this difficult, difficult journey begins, we need to decide on what race to be. And it has a lot to say, really, because... Different races have, well, first of all, different stats, like our Bretons are better with magic, Dark Elves are all, Dark Elves and High Elves also great with magic, then Imperials have a high personality, Khajiits are good at sneaking, and Nords and Orcs can be strong warriors. We also must take into consideration their passive traits. Now, an Argonian can breathe underwater, for example. I think that's pretty useless, compared to what the Breton has. The Breton has a passive which gives him 50% resistance to magic. If somebody slings a fireball at your face, you only take half damage. Isn't that great? When enemies hit like a truck, you need every bit of damage resistance you can get. Plus, they have a greater power called shield, which shields them for 
no dragon skin, not shield, but it is the shield effect and it shields them for 50% of damage for 60 seconds. It's going to be an invaluable resource to have. So you already know we're gonna go with the Breton, you already know it's gonna be a female, most likely. But I was also considering Nord and Orc. Why? Because they start up with a very high Endurance. Endurance is a very important stat in Oblivion, because the higher your Endurance, the more health you will get every time you level up. So if you start with a high base level of Endurance, you ensure that you get the maximum health pool you can possibly have. But I decided to go for a great passive and greater power, over a little bit of extra health, meaning we're gonna be a Breton. Now, male or female, because that gender actually has something to say in Oblivion, whereas in Skyrim it's purely cosmetic, so to say, it has no real effect on a lot of things. Males are generally stronger, and females are generally better at using magic. And of course, if you're a female orc, you have the lowest personality in the game. I can see why. Now, because we are going to be using a lot of magic, we will go with female Breton. I will explain our playstyle as we go along, but magic is going to be essential for succeeding. In addition to their quick and perceptive grasp of spellcraft, even the humblest of Bretons can boast a resistance to magical energies. They are particularly skilled at summoning and healing magic. Well then, let us go. First and foremost, let me share her name. You probably know it, I'll probably put it in the title or description or something. Marina, jo no, Marina, Marina Mistfire, that is her name, and this is going to be her tale, and she will start out as a, as a little girl, she's, we're gonna start out as just the ultimate noob, we're gonna be the ultimate newbie, we're gonna be beating up rats with our fists, so I wanna start at a relatively young age as well, now, the Oblivion character creation is pretty much one of the most horrifying things in existence. This is a Monster Factory. And the Monster Factory episode on Oblivion was quite good. You should go check that out over on Polygon's channel. Oh my gosh. You see? It's... It, it's horrendous. It is... It is hell. It is hell incarnate. You can do some insane things with the characters in this game. And I love it. And often when you mess with one slider, you mess with all of the sliders. Like, if you'd move one, the others tend to move as well. So you can you can get some very very good results here. This is this is gonna be a wonder a wonderful person, but obviously this is not gonna be Marina Mistfire. Looks like she got some some fire straight on her face instead. We're gonna reset that face. Kind of looks like a guy. Ooh, I would not be able to tell. It'd be difficult. My my feelings would be quite I would be quite conflicted. That's because of the complexion. It's like, do you want to be guy? Do you want to be girl? Pretty much. Good old slider. Well then, guys and girls, I'm going to be going through the sliders and trying to make a somewhat decent look, decently looking girl. And I will see you. I feel like our girl is starting to come along right now. It's not too shabby. Now, I found that characters generally look a lot worse during character creation than they do in-game. And we will get one more chance to really mess around with Marina before the tutorial is over, so we'll see how we feel then, but for now, let's say, let's say that we're done. Marina Mistfire. Now, I'm gonna be quoting the Emperor here. Let me see your face. Huh. That's not shabby. Yeah. That's pretty good. I like that. Good job. Now, let's briefly discuss mods while we're at it. I don't have a lot. Let me just find the list right here, just a few. I have the Oblivion unofficial patch. This essentially has like lots of bug fixes and generally makes the game a bit more stable and proper. And it's something that I feel most people should have installed. It does, however, add an extra spell, a lesser power to fix a little bug with the followers. But since we don't have any followers, I'm simply going to remove that spell from our spell book because it's kind of silly when you don't need it. We have the Oblivion script extender, we have Carl's texture pack and it makes things in the environment look a bit sharper and crisper and clearer But it does not affect people as far as I know it doesn't seem like it and I have the darnified UI Now this is what it looks like with the mods and this is what it looks like 
Without the mods, this is the regular Oblivion menu. As you can see, it's clearly optimized for consoles. Now, this is a more PC friendly menu. As you can see, you have like a good overview of all your attributes, all your skills, and you can see a lot of good stats all in one place without having to scroll forever. So very happy about that mod. We got a color map mod. Just makes the main world map look a lot nicer. And we have some new loading screens and a skill diary, which I will talk about once we exit the sewers. But for now, I feel like we should just get this tutorial started, shall we? There's a lot I want to discuss and a lot I want to just get out of the way, but I feel like we should just try to move that along with the same pace as the tutorial. So for now, I got a bone to pick with you, Valendreth. Pale skin, snotty expression. You're a Breton, the masters of magicka. Yes, right? of course. Hmm. You're nothing but a stuck-up harlot <gasps> with cheap parlor tricks. Rude. Go ahead. Try your magicka in here. Let's see you make those bars disappear. No? What's the matter? Not so powerful now, are you, Breton? Me. You're not leaving this prison till they throw your body in the lake. Oh. That's right. You're going to die in here, Breton. You're going to die. Hey, you hear that? The guards are coming. For you. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm sure most of us have already done the tutorial at this point, but... Let's do it one final time, shall we? Together. No, they're dead. I know it. My job right now is to get you to safety. What's this prisoner doing here? This cell is supposed to be off limits. Usual mix up with the watch. I. Never mind. Get that gate open. Stand back, prisoner. We won't hesitate to kill you if you get in our way. You, prisoner, stand aside. Over by the window. Stay out of the way and you won't get hurt. Okay. No sign of. Stay put, prisoner. Good. Let's go. We're not out of this yet. You. I've seen you. Let me see your face. Oh, somebody's outside. <laughs> you are the one from my dreams. Then the stars were right. And this is the day. Gods give me strength. I'm, s I'm sorry, Uriel Septim. That was terribly rude of me to just disappear on you like that, but... Two Asian girls were at the door, asking if I'd thought a lot about the spiritual world. But I'm sure what's going on here is much more important. So, while mo we are going to be doing all the quests, so the story is going to be relatively important to us. So I feel that I will respect cutscenes, I will not talk over the actors, I will give them their space. And when I read dialogue, I'll most likely read it in a male voice, so I don't have to force like, Ugh, I'm Marina Mistfire, pew pew, what's going on, Septim? You know, it's, it's just sort of cringeworthy, so I'm just gonna go with the good old, what's going on? Assassins attacked my sons, and I am next. My blades are leading me out of the city along a secret escape route. By chance, the entrance to that escape route leads through your cell. I should really know this, but who are you? I am your emperor, Uriel Septim. By the grace of the gods, I serve Tamriel as her ruler. You are a citizen of Tamriel. And you, too, shall serve her in your own way. Thanks for the exposition. Why am I in jail? I should really know this, too. Perhaps the gods have placed you here so that we may meet. As for what you have done, it does not matter. That is not what you will be remembered for. What should I do? You will find your own path. Take care. There will be blood and death before the end. Oh, yes. It will Please, be. Please, sire, we must keep moving. Better not close this one. There's no way to open it from the other side. All right. Looks like this is your lucky day. Just stay out of our way. Okay. Well, um... Should I just be standing around? They know you're gonna escape. They're like, well, they're gonna escape. It's like, meh, whatever. I would like to know what I've done, though, but I guess that's up for the player to decide what their character has done in the past. 
Now, before we go on and follow them and get ourselves into combat situations, let's talk a little bit about the difficulty. Currently set to 100%. This game has a slider. It loves its sliders. They're tremendous. This game does not have Novice Apprentice Adept Expert and Master. You can find those difficulty, you know, somewhere along this slider right here, but this game gets brutal. So, it starts off at 50%, and you can set this at any time you want, just like Skyrim. On 50%, you do 100% damage, the enemy does 100% damage. You're on equal levels. If you go down to 0%, you do 6 times the normal damage, and the enemy only does 1 sixth of their regular damage, so you're pretty much a god. If you crank it to 100, enemies do 6 times damage, and you do 1 sixth of your damage. Meaning, a mud crab and a rat. If they team up on you, you better run. I'm not kidding, a mud crab can kill you. It sounds absurd, but this game, this game, man, it's too, it's too much. All right, let's follow them. Let's follow them. I want to stay close to them. If there are going to be rats down here, I need some strong men protecting Stand me. Aside, prisoner. Oh, sorry, I mean to get too close. Close up left. Protect the emperor. <laughs> oh. Protect yourself. But I don't know if I should be fighting the Mythic Dawn by myself. I'll just let the blades handle them. Seems much safer. Although I think Captain Renault died, unfortunately. She's probably down the staircase there. Are you all right, sire? We're clear for now. Captain Reno? She's dead. Sorry, sire, but we have to keep moving. We do. There's trouble ahead. There is. Now, we are about to be engaged in combat, so I have to take a little pause here and... Oh boy. So, our spells are going to be invaluable when it comes to combat. Here is a dragon skin. Our shield spell. This is going to help us out so much, and it's going to help even the odds. Because if it shields us 50%, it basically means that the enemies, instead of dealing 600% damage, they only deal 300%. Still a lot, but considerably less. Half, actually. Who would have guessed? We're going to just get our spells on here. We'll just follow the storyline. It's too late to go back now. Don't worry, sire. We will get you out of here. They won't be the first to underestimate the blades. Huh. I'll take blades. point. What Let's a joke. Move. You stay here, prisoner. Don't try to follow us. All right, I won't. To ready your weapon, do this and this. Because here comes the rats. Oh. Huh. All right, we got this. Oh, I'm almost dead. Ah, gosh. He's eating me. He's eating me alive. Okay, okay, we need, we need to get away from here. Huh. Okay. Oh! How do you get up here? How did the rat jump up here? What the heck? It's a safe space! A safe space! The theater is supposed to be a safe... Okay, um... That's what I get for trying to cheese them by going up here. He freaking came for me! Oh, wow. Well, that's... that's our first enemy dead. Great! He almost got me too, that gosh darn bugger. Now, where's the rat? Oh, he's over here. Okay, now I feel like we're just gonna kill him from above. And this raises the question. How much am I allowed to cheese enemies? Now, obviously, it's my own run. I set my own rules. You need a weapon. Check Renault's body. I will. Do not worry about it. Let's just wait around to get our health back. And get some rat meat, because it's an alchemy ingredient we can use to make poisons. Let's also not loot the Mythic Dawn hood and robe, because they don't give me any armor. They're just gonna weigh me down. And generally, wearing clothes... Is a bad idea because the more armor, the, the the more weight you have on you, the slower you will move. And armor does not really protect you all that much in this game, so I hope you will forgive me, but I will have to undress you a little bit, simply because we can move around faster this way, and armor is pretty useless either way. If you equip heavy armor, sure, you can take more blows, but it'll also lower your spell effectiveness. It's more difficult to be a battle mage in this one, because if you wear heavy armor, you will do less damage with your spells. Yeah, we're gonna have to find ourselves some uh, proper robes at the mage's college. Renault's Akaviri Katana. We'll definitely take the katana and keep it around. It's gonna be number one. And Captain Renault herself also has a steel short sword that I might take and sell. And a torch, which I love to hotkey on for. Good thing about hotkeys is that I can quickly swap between weapons and such, boop, without having to go into the menus and bug you with that. 
We got ourselves a weak potion of healing right here. It's gonna be very useful. Now, I know one of these Mythic Dawn members also has a weak potion of sorcery, so we want that. Okay. They went that way, but they locked the door behind them. So, I'm not, I'm not supposed to go there. I'm supposed to go here. We already have a rat waiting for me. Oh boy, now there is a bow over there that I would like to get to, but I think for now, let's just check out some distance here. What I could have been doing before I had the other rat encounter, as you can see, if you can get the upper hand, mm, you'll survive. But if they surprise you, oh boy, you're a goner. I could have used dragon skin in the previous encounter, and I probably should have. I should probably have it up as much as possible because of its immense power. Now this poor Skella buddy here, we're gonna take your arrows. I'm also going to take the rough letter because it weighs little, but it's worth relatively much compared to the weight. So we're gonna take it, even though I'm not going to be using it, because yes, while going up in some rough letter is both kinky and good for your protection, six armor is not really worth losing out on 20% of your spell effectiveness. You get me? So we're gonna be wearing robes mostly, robes that increase our magicka. Now the wrist irons are actually extremely good, because I believe they are the only piece of, like, gauntlet that you can enchant. So they go in like, you know, the gauntlet slot, and they don't weigh anything, they don't lower your spell effectiveness, and they can be enchanted to have great effects. So we're definitely gonna be keeping the wrist irons. The rest I can pretty much just throw away. Gonna... Get rid of my pants, too. There we go. Don't need these sandals. Give him a good punch. And there we go. We're gonna be a barbarian for a little while. Okay. Let's get the bow. Let's pick up a shield, I suppose. Now, it wants to teach me to fire a bow over here. And we can, of course, do so by doing something like... Boop. Shoot this! Archery! That's how it works. Amazing! Now... Here is the greatest lockpicking in the Elder Scrolls. People are gonna disagree, but I love Oblivion's lockpicking. This is my favorite kind of lockpicking. Because at the, my current skill level of 5, that's 5 out of 100 by the way, you can do a very hard lock if you have the skills. It's so skill-based. You can do, at the lowest level, you can pick a master lock with your eyes closed because it, it's based on audio cues. You have to push it up, push the tumbler up, and see how it reacts. As you can see, the very easy tumbler always does the correct motion. That's slow moving up, and then you click the mouse just at the top. But usually, when you have more, they make distinct noises when you push them, so you need to wait and listen for this. And when you hear that, click immediately. So, you can close your eyes and complete very hard locks, compared to Skyrim where you're almost always guaranteed to break a few locks until you find that sweet spot, especially on PC where you don't have, like, manual control over how much you turn the different tools. So we're gonna open this up, have a look inside, and grab a sapphire. Wonderful. Alright, we've left a mess in here. So let's see if we can't get out. Take back my arrow, and say hello to a goblin shaman. Oh, hey there. Yes, there are indeed goblins down here. It's gonna be great. Looks like the goblin is equipped with Lucille over here. Oh boy, not good. We'll take the iron key, which is gonna lead us out. We'll leave the club be as well, not worth bringing with us. Get some iron arrows, and a lockpick. Alright, that should be it. That was the first, that was the first zone cleared! Good job, we did not die. Practice casting spells. Spells are probably going to be very, very useful. They're going to be our main way of managing to survive here. We'll take a little look at the skill list after this, and I can discuss a little bit, but as you can see, when I hold an arrow on the bow, it drains my fatigue. Which is really punishing, honestly. Ugh. No, give me this back. You cannot actually cancel an arrow in this one, which I feel is kind of silly. I got two sneak levels just by doing that, and I don't really want to level my skills yet. There's, uh, the Oblivion skill level is very- oh gosh. Use fireball. Fireball's more powerful. Use fireball! Okay. You almost killed me, buddy. Mm-mm-mm. Starting to think I should use the, uh, dragon skin right about now. You cannot wait when enemies are nearby? Okay, good. I'm just gonna wait over here in the corner to heal. 
Let me show you some of the skills around here. Yep, thank you very much. I know very well how to do things. Hmm. First and foremost, let's have a look at the attributes. Strength affects how much you can carry, how much fatigue you have, and how much damage you can do with melee weapons such as swords and axes. Strength will not be a priority for us. We already have a very low strength, and considering we won't be focusing on it straight away means that our carry weight is gonna be pretty bad, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Intelligence affects your total magicka and magic use. We want more intelligence, but I feel like we should focus even more on willpower. Affects how quickly you regenerate magicka and how much fatigue you have. I really do like willpower. Agility affects your ability to maneuver and balance your total fatigue and damage done by bows. Again, not gonna be a big focus for me. Speed, however, is going to be quite important, because if I can move fast, I can dodge away from opponents. Endurance, very important. Now I'm starting out with 30 endurance, which is very, very low, so I'm going to make sure that I pick a birth sign that boosts my endurance. Personality, affects how much people like you, which leads to better information. Will not be a big one. And luck is a very weird stat. Basically, the more luck you have, the better you are at everything, slightly, and it also like increases the chance that you'll win when betting in the arena, for example, but it will not be a big priority, because my goal is not to get 100 in every attribute, it's to get 100 in every skill. We have the armor skill, means you can repair things and maintain weapons and armor, because everything is degradable in this game, because of reasons. Athletics, yeah, there's a skill for running around and swimming, okay? Don't question it. Blade for swords, block for blocking, blunt for axes. Hand to hand, they have their own skill for punching down fools, it's great. Heavy armor, self-explanatory. Alchemy, this one is going to be really important for us. Alteration is not a school of magic I'm going to be using a lot. Conjuration, however, being able to summon creatures is going to be such a big help, because when you summon a skeleton with an axe, that skeleton is going to take his axe and beat your opponent, and the skeleton is actually going to do full damage compared to you. Your damage is nerfed, but anything you summon is just as powerful as it would be compared to the component. Like, they are... component? Opponents. They're on the same level. Destruction? We're also gonna focus on this. It's just useful to be able to, you know, blast away your opponents. Illusion? Probably one of the most important schools of magic. Especially the... Calm spell. If there are three goblins coming at me, if I can do pew pew and have two of them stand still, as calm does, because it just makes them relax for a while and not attack you, I can like stack the odds in my favor during battles, which I feel this difficulty is going to be all about. Mysticism? Don't care. <laughs> Shit. Not really. That's a little rough, but it's it's not that great. Restoration? We will focus a little bit on acrobatics. Jumping. Hey, it's good. <laughs> Light armor. Marksman, we will focus on because it's going to be really good to hit some enemies with poisoned arrows, which will make through alchemy. The mercantile skill is actually going to be kind of important because we're going to need some money and we're going to have to be selling a lot. Security, pick locks, extremely useless skill, really, because if you're good at the lock picking game, you don't, you can do fine with just a level five. Sneak for sneaking, we will train, and speechcraft, the most silly skill in the entire game, but we'll see. It's time to go down and face the section that gave me nightmares as a kid right here. It's like, oh, there's a rat. Wait, he's not attacking me. Well, that was weird. What? There's another rat. Two rats, actually. What's going on? Oh my gosh, it's a zombie. This scared the heck out of me when I was younger. I mean, look at this guy. He is terrifying. Ah, kill him. Oh my god. Wait, did he do half my health? Yeah, okay, I'm staying at a distance. Don't come near me, buddy. Da, ah, gosh darn. I'll leave these rats be. There's really no point to killing them. Other than gaining a little bit of rat meat. But I can, I can, I can pass. Now he will drop some more flesh, which is good because it has damage fatigue. This is coincidentally the same effect that rat meat has. So when I get some alchemy equipment, we can make a damage fatigue poison. Not the most useful thing you can ever make, but it's a start. And the way you get better at doing something is by doing it, basically. I would really like to save here, but there are enemies, not save, but just wait around a little bit for the enemies to disappear, because I cannot currently wait. One of the big tactics that we're gonna have is going, to <laughs> athletic skill, just for running around a dungeon. One of the big things that's really going to help us out, all of these rats are docile, it's so nice, is waiting, because it's going to heal us up 
fully. Now, if you wait 24 hours, you will also get your greater power back, meaning that the dragon skin, is, that is the name of it, right? Yes, dragon skin is going to be an ability we will have available to us very often, which is good because it's truly going to help us out in these combat scenarios. Like right now, I'm gonna pop it and I'm gonna rush in and get ready to flare up some rats. So now they only do 300% damage compared to 600. How wonderful, as you can see, it still hurts. You still don't wanna get ganged up on by these rats here. Okay, we got two of them. Only one left, only one left. Now, I don't really want to use my Magicka for healing. I really look forward to choosing my class, because when you choose your class, you choose your major skills, and those major skills essentially reach Apprentice level. They do use, like, the Novice Apprentice and Adept system here, only that Adept is called Journeyman, but they use it for skills instead. So when you reach level 25 in a skill, you get something new. When you reach 50, you get something new, and 75, and 100. So it's going to be very important to hit those milestones. But there we go. Dragon skin really helped us out of that pickle right there. There's still enemies nearby. Gosh. This is rough. I think I'm just going to back away a little bit just so I can wait and get my magic up. Now, if it happens to be a lot of waiting around, like waiting 24 hours to get your dragon skin back, it's not going to be a problem. It's not going to bore you because of the magic of editing. See? I'm really gonna do my best with this series to really cut out every part that I deem not fun. Because there is going to be a little bit of grinding for skills to get the right attributes. I'll talk about this probably in the next episode, but... I will do my best to only keep in the fun, exciting stuff and not the frustrating stuff which is bound to come. So, hopefully you will find it entertaining. And of course, quick saving and quick loading is gonna be a big part of it as well. I'm gonna start to get a few shots off on this rat here. I do want to increase my marksman eventually, because if I make strong poisons and get a good sneak attack, I'm not sure, but a, getting a good sneak attack with a poison can be extremely, extremely efficient. I'm not sure if the multiplier affects the poison too, but either way, it's 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 proven to be quite powerful for me in the past, so definitely gonna be focusing on that. There we go. Didn't even need to use my dragon skin. I consider that a small victory. Get my arrow back. So, what would you call it when you're sort of a magic user, but you also pull out your bow from time to time? I'm not sure. Also, I'm an alchemist. I'm considering naming the class just Survivor, because that's what this is going to be all about. And especially without the fast travel rule, if I'm going to get to Coral, I'm going to have to walk to Cor Coral. C Coral! Sorry, Walking Dead flashbacks here. I'm going to have to walk all the way to the city, and I can get attacked on the roads by bandits. Bandits might totally disown me, you know? I might I might die right then and there. Traveling on the roads or traveling out and about in general is going to be so much more tense as a result of the crushing difficulty. Oh, because you cannot just breeze through anymore. That's the thing. Although if there's just one rat, I can... Oh, oh where's he? Oh, don't kill me. Oh, that was a close one. Oh, almost got him. As you can see, even one rat poses an issue. So what's it going to be like to go inside the Oblivion Gates? I don't want to know. I honestly do not want to know because I find Oblivion Gates to be quite difficult in general. So we have to spec our character in such a way that we will be powerful enough. But I don't want to use too many exploits or cheese the game too heavily. Meaning I know there's a way to cheese Umbra, a very powerful warrior that drops a sword that is extremely good at level 1. Or just in general, but especially at level 1 when you... And our first death, ladies and gentlemen. That was uh, qu quite the uh, quite the kill there, Mr. Rat. I I salute you. I wasn't paying attention too much. <laughs> An extremely powerful sword. Now she's like level fifty or something. She's incredibly hard to kill, but you can cheese her by like jumping up on this pillar and then just pow pound pounding her, peltering her with arrows until she falls over and dies. And you get a super powerful sword at level one. That sounds smart, but I feel like that's almost too much. Can you go to hell? Come on, please! I would not feel comfortable doing that. However, if I'm facing a lot of opponents and I can get some of them stuck behind barrels or something as I pelter them with arrows, I feel generally more okay, but there is a line to draw there because I will need to cheese the game and its system a little bit, but I don't want to do it to the point where it feels like I'm straight up cheating. You know, everybody has to roll morals when it comes to this, especially in single player games. You totally decide what you want to do and not do, you know, to make to make the game experience easier or harder, but that's just the rules that I have set for myself. 
at this very moment. Now, there are some more enemies nearby, but I cannot seem to wait around. There we go. Just to get my health back before we continue. Oh, this poor girl, fighting her way through the underground in her underwear. So fitting. She doesn't look half bad, though. She looks pretty good, you know, f for Oblivion face graphics. Proud of you, girl. You got good genes. Now, I know there are some rats down here. In the tunnel. Uh, sure, most people watching have been through this section here numerous times. Well, if you've played Oblivion at the very least. Oh. And get rid of him. Don't eat him. Blech. Wonderful. Good stuff. We're gonna want to try and get the alchemy equipment as soon as possible because making potions early on can get you some uh, nice amounts of gold. And eventually, having a powerful paralyzed poison, for example, can be really, really good. But just combining... I love the fact that the game is so punishing on this difficulty because it really makes you think about everything, you know? Makes you consider your character, what skills you have, and how you approach each combat situation, always being rested and ready for what might appear. Get him. Get him. Okay, good. Whew. Bye-bye, Mr. Rat. Sorry about that. Let's get these Wisp Stocks. What effect do they have? Wisp Stocks damage health. Ooh, so I can make some good poisons with those. Let's definitely keep our eyes open for the Wisp Stocks. Now over here we have the Kern Bullet. Uh, and this mushroom right here is going to let us make some Restore Health Potions. Now we need to find another ingredient with the same property, restore health. I know you can get it from venison, so if you go hunting some deer and combine it with these mushrooms, we get something very drinkable and good for us. Potion of healing, that's a regular potion as well instead of a weak one. That'll be very, very good for us. Tutorial, you can hotkey items, I know. But guys and girls, we are about to enter Goblin Town. You thought the rats were tough? You thought they were a challenge. Well, they're, uh, they're gonna be nothing compared to what we're gonna be facing in here. This is a clear sign of the amount of dying that's gonna be going on here, but we gotta get through it. I wanna fell every single enemy in the tutorial instead of just running by like a chicken. So we're gonna go into the natural caverns and I'm going to conclude today's episode right here. We'll figure out an optimal length for these after a while, but for now, I like where we're at at the moment. I'll also get some clothes on her so she looks somewhat decent. And I will say goodbye. It's been a fun first episode. I hope I managed to properly hook you into the premise that I have for this series. And the fun that's going to arise from living in an extremely... <sighs> excuse me. Unforgiving world. We have to make Marina Mistfire as powerful as possible to keep up with the enemies. In the next one, we're going to be choosing our class and talking a lot about our future playstyle, so I hope you will tune in then. Have a still good day, take care and stay awesome. But most importantly, everybody, stay dark. Goodbye.